Hi, welcome to Technology Business Research. I'm Patrick Heffernan, joined by my colleague, Kevin Colopy. At the end, I'll talk about what it is we do and how we do it, but I want to start right from the top. Kevin, what's been happening with the vendors that you cover? Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to uh, call out two specific vendors, HP and Dell. Um, we cover them from the professional services point of view. Um, also looking at the corporate view of the companies, a lot of turbulence, a lot of divestments, a lot of acquisitions over the last, say, 10 years uh, that have been covering them. Um, to kind of pick a point um, with all of these divestments and acquisitions, it's hard to get fair year-to-year -year compares between the two companies. Let's say start at the uh, beginning of COVID, 1Q 2020. Dell has outperformed at the corporate level and our professional services estimates of the companies nine of the 11 quarters. Um, most recently is this interesting blurb, possibly inflection point where HP severely outperformed Dell. Um, HP at the corporate level was close to 7% year to year growth, whereas Dell was actually a decline close to 6%. That's, that's nuts because HP has posted a string of not so great quarters and then all of a sudden a great quarter. So is it something HPE did last quarter that that got that result? Or was it just the market changed in a way that benefited them? Because it's two different things. Yeah. So to be fair, one data point doesn't necessarily indicate a full trend. Um, but if I had to sit here and speculate, you know, being the analyst we are, uh, there could be a few things that are playing into that. Um, you know, a, a slowdown in the hardware refresh cycle with Dell still holding its PC units, whereas legacy HP had spun that off, formed HP Inc. Um, that benefited HP to not HPE to not have to carry those those declines. Um, additionally, HP could have stuffed the channel a little bit last mm -hmm. quarter, um, and they could have you know benefited from as we had mentioned you know previous struggles, an easier year to year compare. Yeah, um, you know so a lot of those things play you know different different attributes, but. To have that wide of a gap, it's definitely something that has has our has our interest, and we'll be closely looking out for the the next quarter's reported numbers. Right, because the first thing was more about what's happening in the broader market, and the second thing is a, a tactic that HP may have used themselves just to to boost things up. When you put those two things together, and and you think about those companies and maybe the larger ecosystem they're playing in, um, is there are there opportunities for somebody to take a take advantage of that same market condition? Or are there opportunities for uh, a Dell or, or somebody else at DXC or an NTT to come in and, and take a, a page out of HPE's playbook? Yeah, with uh, money seem, seeming to tighten a little bit, budgets getting constrained, um, you know, a, a downtrend in the hardware refresh cycle, uh, you know, reduced infrastructure sales, that's gonna, that's gonna definitely hurt all of the OEMs. Um, you know, some more or less than others. I would say the ones that will fare better are the early adapters to their as a service delivery. HP was one of the first and, you know, with the boldest claims um, with their as a service delivery around GreenLake. Um, they really had corporate buy-in. They knew that was the way of the future. Clients were already adapted to that um, cloud type as a, you know, subscription service. Um, so they got a lot of early market share. The tricky part is those other market dynamics I had kind of mentioned was the whole partner landscape where HP is very historically very reliant, you know, selling their infrastructure through their channel partners, you know, close to 70, 80% of their sales coming through the, the partner channel, whereas Dell is, you know, uh, much less than that. That could benefit Dell in that area if, they can find that silver bullet of finding ways to get that as a service there, you know, for Dell Apex out to clients, get that sticky feature, get them on that Dell platform and get them on the Dell infrastructure and often get them on their higher margin, close to the box, managed services. Right. Um, that's kind of that the, the sweet spot that would help offset a prolonged negative economic cycle if you can run you know 20 30 percent margins on some of these professional services right last question real quick you mentioned managed services everyone seems to be getting into the managed services game are there certain vendors or 
kinds of vendors that we should be on the lookout for? Who could be disruptive, particularly to a Dell and an HPE? Yes, I think the uh, the value-added resellers that we had kind of alluded to as, as part of that channel market, that is where they're interested in going. That is what they are investing in. They know they're getting squeezed, you know, with the margins as, as far as, you know, the, that infrastructure play and reselling. They want, they want a piece of that market. And oftentimes it's direct competition to some of the OEMs. So finding their swim lanes and um, finding a way to play in the pool together is, is going to be pretty important going forward. <laughs> I tend to think about it like a sandbox, not a pool, <laughs> but that's okay. So again, technology business research, we dive deep into every one of these companies that, that Kevin has mentioned. We talk about the broader ecosystem, how they partner, how they ally. Our main focus is what is an individual vendor's strategy? What's been their performance? Do those two things make sense? How do they play in the larger market? That's what we do. If you have any questions, give either one of us a call. Thank you. Thank you.